Um, so you have your handy dandy outline. Oh, you were. This one is uh, comparing and contrasting um, insects with uh, spiders. And so there's two parts to it, kind of, that um, you just, you want to try to collect spiders before your elf day. And um, I was out today. Mine are not nearly as impressive as your neighbors. <laughs> and this is, this is what we'd like you guys to do. Go out and collect some in your yard, in your house. And just grab an index card if you feel comfortable enough, throw them in a jar, and bring them in. And if you get the chance to ID them, great. Or if you don't, just bring them in. So Sun's class is going tomorrow, and where did you find Sun's? Well, I was going to say that the, uh, the wolf spiders are the most common ones that you find in your house. I think probably most people have a, a bunch of them in their basement, so if you want to bring those in. And that's kind of a, a that's more of a true spider, so that versus a tarantula, which is a different brand. Okay. Of the so. No, they look kind of like tarantulas. They're just they're just kind of bigger. They're either brown or a gray. Um, I've never actually been bitten by a wolf spider. I catch it. So I think those are probably the most are the little jumping spiders. You have those in your house. And they're really tiny, and they do jump. No. Okay, so mine are so tiny you can barely see them. <laughs> a good place, you know, the kids won't really care. They're different ones. And um, a good place that I found them was uh, on my patio on a sunny side of my house this afternoon. And did you have any good? I found mine in the basement windows. And outside. Yeah. The basement windows. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, one that I really wanted to point out, I'll pass around. The rest of mine aren't really worth passing around. Um, <laughs> This one is a, I don't know if it's a native to Colorado, maybe Mr. Granberg can um, tell us exactly the kind, but it's, we call them wind scorpions and they have a very, very painful bite. This one's young because its abdomen is still kind of blackish, but they get very red and then their abdomen, or their, I'm sorry, cephalothorax is um, uh, kind of creamy color. So I'll pass this one around because it's worth noting that they're unfair all over the place and they bite painfully. So. Anyway, so you can, if you wanted to, you could have the kids bring in their own spiders. Um, that's up to you, or just class coordinator, or whoever's doing seven one could bring in spiders, or all of you could. They're kind of hard to find. <coughs> but I found five in about a, a half an hour. So. Yeah. So, um, so they're not that hard to find. Um, then uh, we have four books in here, and I did something. We just organized them a little bit better this time. Uh, they have a little uh, note card on the front that says the poignant pages. Um, this one has insect comparison, spider anatomy, and anatomy and the baby spiders, um, spiderlings. And then uh, this book, the whole book was good. You could read it for introduction or conclusion. Sorry, I'm really showing the camera everything over there, so you guys are kind of missing out. Um, this one, page 10, was insect comparison. And then the last one was the life cycle of the spider. And I have a special note, third grade is going through life cycles right now. So if you're a third grade class, be sure and cover the life cycle. The molting would go good with that as well. So for center one, you could do spiderlings, uh, ballooning with the webs, and um, the life cycle. Um, other items in here. We have a fact. Yeah, have way more stuff than 15, 20 minutes would cover. Oh, yes. So once they, so once they look over their spiders, they're identifying, they can compare them to um, insects. Um, they could talk about all that. We have some plastic ones in here in case our real ones aren't quite big enough. <laughs> so there's plastic insects in here and plastic spiders, so they can compare. They can also see the spiders are actually pretty anatomically correct with the um, legs attached to the head, so that's pretty cool. We pick um, up most of those with disguises, that Halloween store down on Colfax. <laughs> we had a lot of them there. Oh, we have a couple insects in here. We have a dragonfly and a big, huge, picky beetle. That was uh, Maddie. What's Maddie's last name? Oh, bitch. Jonans. Oh, bitch or something. Oh, and they're very fragile. I'm breaking legs. And, uh, so anyway, there's a few insects. Well, you can show them and they can compare. Um, then another thing we have once you talk about that and show them some books is uh, oh, um, to write a fact about the spider on each one of the spider's legs. So eight facts about spiders. And we, of course, have a key <laughs> with eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve things in case they say, well, what about this? Um, um, there's also some great handouts in here, parts, or uh, big things to look at. It's parts of a spider. 
And depending on the age of the kids is how detailed you want to get about it. Oh yeah, that's great. Thanks. Um, if you really want to try to identify your spiders, we have some laminated sheets with different kinds of spiders. And then we have some bigger diagrams for more common spiders. Garden spider, wolf spider, the infamous black widow, and brown recluse. Um, then we just had some really cool pictures and articles on OEP. I think that's so shiny. I, I can just hold it up for you. Okay. So this is a, a tarantula, but it's a blue one. Mr. Wow. Cranberry, I hope he knows about that more than me. This handout has how spiders molt in the bottom right. So if you are doing the molting in the center one, the bottom right talks about molting. It also talks about giant fangs, a couple facts, spider um, anatomy, and uh, just a couple of the specialties of spiders, special characteristics. Oh, and most spiders have it up to eight eyes, but none of them see very well. And uh, there's a gal here with eight eyes, and I guess it kind of compares like what that would be like. Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. This is a more um, maybe kindergarten, first grade drawing of a spider. But scary. Um, if you grab the dry erase, you can maybe work on this worksheet with the class. It's on, it's laminated, so you can dry erase that one. Not that I really think you'll have too much time, because we have so much cool stuff. And this is that one I showed at the beginning that's a supplement. I'll stick this actually in the black crate, so that um, if you wanted to supplement, you could, uh, a, a worksheet, you could hand that out then. But I would say we're definitely more into the hands-on stuff of actually maybe identifying it on the actual spider than we are the worksheets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just have those in there as a supplement if you want to do that, if you feel more comfortable with that. A good grasshopper picture for an insect. And then, the last thing for the center, it says uh, down at the bottom, um, as time permits, use the Venn diagram. This was made for us by Barb um, Goldman. And we have a key. We always have a key. So it's comparing insects and spiders. Again, they're from this, are they from the same phylum? So this is the Venn diagram, and then she taped the little guys that go onto the Venn diagram in the back. Really try not to lose any of these because we don't have any extras. So they're the same phylum? So they have the, whatever you call it, the Velcro? Velcro. The Velcro on the back, and you just slap them on where they belong. So, I mean, you could even spend five minutes looking at spiders and then move right onto this Venn diagram if you want. Um, it's kind of up to you. There's a lot of stuff in this. Yeah, and they can look at, you know, maybe you could have, there's plenty of these that each kid could hold one and try to describe, you know, the differences um, and, then, and then find where it belongs on the Venn diagram. So that would be center one.